ready to begin. This is the uh, meeting of the Governance Organization Legislation Committee. It is October 2nd, and we are being recorded. Um, you don't need to uh, fix your TV screens or your computer screens. Um, I'm not Mandy. Um, uh, I have been uh, made chair or elected chair, I guess that's the correct term. Uh, Mandy has moved on to CRC, and uh, we'd also like to welcome our note taker, Megan, um, which is a great addition to our our team. So we're calling ourselves to order at 1037 on October 2nd. And everyone should have the agenda in front of them, either in hard copy or on their computer screens. And uh, the first item on for discussion today is the Town Council FAQ for the public relating to resolutions, proclamations, commemorations, and citations. And thanks to Evan, we do have a document. Uh, we may actually have more than one, but Evan's I know is up. He did some um, editing, and I think we should open that um, and begin our discussion there. Um, this is the document that has Ross 10-1-2019. So I'm going to open that up on my computer if I can find it. can begin oh, it's not still open okay and Evan since you um, I think made a number of uh, edits to this based on our discussion in the last meeting um, the first one I noticed is right under item two um, do you want to take us through this or how do you want okay so uh, Evan take it Sure, so uh, I downloaded the version that was in our packet from last meeting. Mm -hmm. I, I know that I think that Mandy and George had been taking notes on things to f maybe fix um, in our last meeting on it. Um, mm -hmm. Was it? No, it wasn't We've it last time. We've been at this a while. Oh God, it, it doesn't matter. I downloaded what I thought was the most recent version. Yes. There were changes that I thought had either been made or we had decided to make that weren't in that. Right. To the best of my ability, I tried to remember them and add them so that we don't have a million different documents going around. Mm -hmm. So some of them were very basic things like adding that A to charter section 8.2A under number two, mm -hmm. which we had recognized earlier, but in the document I had hadn't been updated. Right. Um, a few other things I tried, again, at working, I didn't have notes on this, so working from memory. Mm -hmm. But the biggest change um, was the deletion of six, which has been a discussion point right. uh, for some time now, and working the concept or intent of six into one, but reframing it. And so this was done last night. Um, it is, it, so by which I'm saying, I am not wedded to this language. It is an idea, um, but one of the one of the things that I had said last meeting was I like the idea of sort of putting out there what kind of things we might consider or might want, um, but framing it more in a positive. I'm not sure I accomplished that, but mm -hmm. um, so the language that I wrote was resolutions, proclamations, citations, and commemorations submitted to the town council should have a direct bearing on the town of Amherst or its residents or recognize an Amherst resident organization. Those measures without a clear connection to Amherst may be more appropriate for a different legislative body. That's almost copy and pasted from George's language, mm -hmm. um, just with the like, without the, mm -hmm. we might not act on them otherwise. No, 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 um, no. And sort of with the idea that there are other places you can send these if it doesn't have a direct connection to Amherst. It's not really that different from what George had. It's just moved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mandy, any thoughts on what you're seeing here? And then you can take a moment to read it because everyone is seeing this really, uh, I know Mandy is seeing it pretty much for the first time. No, I mean, at first glance, that addition to number one that Evan just read, I think captures what we were discussing and we're concerned about. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't, I don't really have any recommendations for that. Okay. Mm. You're happy with the language as you see it at the moment. Um, 
again, the idea of a direct bearing on the town of Amherst or its residents or recognize an Amherst resident organization. And those measures without a clear connection to Amherst may be more appropriate for a different legislative body. I guess the one thing we could add, the commemoration section says person, organization, or event. So recognize an Amherst resident organization or event, mm -hmm. maybe. Okay. We could um, add events. To sort of make it a little more consistent okay. with our definitions at the top. Okay. How do you feel about that, Evan? Is that... Uh, uh, <coughs> excuse me. That's fine. I think that um, I, I had actually written that and then deleted it because in my and the reason for that was in my mind I was like, oh wait, would event mean like Black History Month, which is not like an Amherst thing? It's an every. But then I realized mm -hmm. that's a proclamation. Mm -hmm. Have we done a commemoration for an event? I don't believe we've done a commemoration. No. No. But but I'm literally looking at it now and realizing where my mind went wrong there. So no, no, that's, yeah. So event, we could add event. Um, and finally, those measures without a clear connection to Amherst may be more appropriate for a different legislative body. I like that in the sense that um, we're not making any threats. We're not saying, you know, we're going to do this X, Y, or Z. Um, we're just making a suggestion that, that the, uh, as you said, when someone reads this, there's sort of a logic to it starting at the top where you have definitions and then uh, a brief statement of, you know, what broadly speaking would be appropriate, um, and then we get into some more details. So I think moving it up is, was a good suggestion. Um, I'm comfortable with keeping this. We might get some pushback from the council, but that's, you know, we'll have a discussion. We'll see what people think. Some might say direct bearing, and there could be, <laughs> could be a discussion on that. Um, but. Um, I think it's worth having that discussion with the council. Maybe we'll find out that, that others feel differently, but um, it sounds like Evan and I and, and perhaps Mandy think that this is worth um, putting up top. Um, doesn't say what we will or won't do, doesn't make any kinds of uh, uh, threats or anything like that. It just uh, does what I think we want. So I'm happy with it as it is. Now with that one addition of event, any other thoughts? I just have one really minor request. That's okay. Yeah. In the proclamation definition, yeah. it is the only definition that we didn't italicize something. It's true. And so, for consistency, should we pick the words to talify, to, to, to italicize? I mean, would be, I think, to make something known. Yeah. I think to do that. Should we put italicize to make something known? Mm -hmm. That's what I'd pick. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Okay. Um, just looking at the other items quickly. Um, I don't recall. I don't recall. Uh, we have, I think we have figured out. I tried to get the. Uh, the link for frequently asked questions. I assume that's that's actually right and is in the document, but I have no confidence. It, it looked like it to me, I think, yeah, when okay, I checked good. it. Good, so as far as, the, and we can always fix it. Um, and then number five, is, was there, I think just after its formal review, GOL will forward the measure to the full council along with its report. Agendas are set by the president of the council and the president may use their discretion in placing items on the agenda. It's just descriptive and um, just tells them, broadly speaking, what will happen. Yeah. So just to throw out there again, I um, did my best to remember what we had done. And so the change I made to five was to take out the language that said usually it would be taken up at the next council meeting. Right. Um, and then the other thing was um, removed, the original language was uh, forward the measure to the full council with its recommendation for action, and I deleted that and replaced it with report, which is what I think we settled on, but again, I'm relying on memory mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So those are the two changes I did make there. I've got a clean version, and it looks like, let me breeze through quickly. Sure. Um, the, what was it, number, sorry, number three. Sponsors or petitioners. I mean, it looks like everything you got 
you got everything that we talked about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. The thought was with uh, recommendation that it, it might give a false sense of somehow we're approving. Uh, and so I thought the suggestion of the report is, is uh, better and uh, more accurate, really. So good. Any other? Because uh, I'm willing to entertain a motion uh, for this uh, as uh, amended today. Um, unless people feel uncomfortable with just three members present. So, so I will move that we adopt the FAQ on resolutions, proclamations, citations, and commemorations as amended. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and we have a second. Um, discussion. Just a quick one. Yeah. Is this something we're sending on to the council, or is this one that we're just adopting and keeping as our own GOL thing? No, I think now's a good time. Um, we should, we should, because uh, we might want to amend the motion, or maybe we'll just do a second motion, or maybe we won't do anything. But I think it's a fair question, and I think we should discuss it now. So, what happens to this um, if it's approved? What happens to it next? So as far as I'm concerned, um, this is an FAQ that we are adopting, uh, and it does not need adoption by the council, uh, whereas the rule change on resolutions, proclamations, citations, commemorations does need adoption. What I was going to suggest is that in the report mm -hmm. that's presented to the council, um, about all of this, um, we provide this FAQ to the council and we give the council an opportunity to offer feedback um, if they would like to, but I do not want the council voting on this. I think that this is our document that we've developed. So I think the council should see it and I think they should have the opportunity to give feedback to it, um, but I don't think it should be voted on. I think it's an attachment to a report. Sounds good to me. So we would like the chair in uh, submitting his report to town council to um, mention that, or to alert the council that this change has been made or this FAQ has been created and something to the fact that we would welcome any feedback, um, but we're not uh, soliciting it at the meeting. Um, it would, let me just think, would it be in their packet? Um, I could attach it. Uh, again, I'm just new at this, so I'm trying to just think. Um, would this be something we would include in um, our submission to the council for that meeting so that people in theory could look at it in advance, or are we simply going to let them know that we've made this, uh, we've created this FAQ and it's gonna be put up on the town website and we welcome any comments. Um, sounds like Evan, you're leaning more in the direction of just letting them know that we've created this and it's gonna go up on the town website and uh, if you have any thoughts about it or comments, you can submit them to me or tell the chair, but it wouldn't be attached to uh, what we're submitting uh, at the council meeting. What, what are your thoughts on that? I would, I would attach it so I don't, I don't know what your plans are for reports to the council. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, and, and so my first question is for Mandy because you're most likely to know this. Um, the recommended revisions to Rule 8, are they likely to be on the agenda for 10-7? They are. Okay, so I don't necessarily expect our chair to provide a written report to the council for the 10-7 meeting since we'd want to submit that like today. It's already drafted. So maybe we I, just. I did forward that draft. to. I, I think I forwarded you the draft, George. <laughs> so maybe we just, if if we adopt this today, we just did attach that to that report. You could add a, uh, just a sentence to the Rule Eight section that says something about we also adopted an FAQ related mm -hmm. to these changes. And that's also in and, the, and it's attached. It's attached. Something so like you'd that. like it attached. 
and mentioned maybe in, in past and mentioned in the other one. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, and then I think yeah, the, sure. the question is, do we actually want feedback from the council? So we can actively say during the, in either in the report or during the meeting, please look at this, and if you have thoughts or feedback, send it to the chair. Right. Or we can just say, hey, we also adopted this FAQ, attach it, and then if someone reads it and goes, oh, I have an issue with this, mm -hmm. then they can reach out. But there's a difference between actively soliciting feedback and then just accepting feedback if someone feels so inclined. Mm -hmm. mm. I think it's up to the chair. Yeah, okay. Unless you have strong feelings, I'll, I'll decide one way or the other. I think it, if we do attach it, it's conceivable given uh, uh, some of the members of the council are very good about looking at just about everything. I do not include myself in that category, but that's, that's neither here nor there. Um, so it's conceivable that we could get into a discussion about this at the council meeting, um, but um, we will I will attach it, and I will mention it um, in the report, um, and we'll just leave it at that, see what happens. So we have a motion that's been seconded. It's on the floor. Um, I'm ready to go to vote, to call the question. Any further discussion? Okay. Um, all those in favor of the motion, and uh, do we need to read the motion again, or could we have the uh, note taker repeat it for us? <coughs> no, it's all right. We're all you makes make two of us, so <laughs> we're we're learning together here. It's no problem. No, I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. We just want to make sure that that it's in the minutes and that it's what we. Okay, so probably what you said, Evan. <laughs> right, right. Okay, right. And um, okay, and we said okay, that's sufficient. All right. So that's the motion that's been uh, moved and seconded. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Raise your hand. Aye. aye. All those opposed, and there are two absent. So it is unanimous. It's three to zero. Uh, three in favor, no against, and two absent. The motion carries. All right. Item number uh, three in our agenda is a follow-up discussion and possible vote on revision to rules of procedure, Rule 10-4, ad hoc committee, and Rule 10-5 work groups. Um, so we've had considerable discussion on this, and I believe Councillor Ross has been also at work here. Um, so we have a document in our documents list here, if I can find it. Uh, the committee members will help me. Which ones do we, we're going to look at which one first here? Which? <coughs> so the, the same one, the only difference is um, wh if, you, if you're viewing them on SharePoint, they look the exact same. One of them is a redlined version, and one is a clean version. So they're the same thing, but if you want to see what I actually changed, uh -huh. you'll need to download the one that says redlined, and that will show all of the track changes. Okay. Uh, right. Let's, I'm going to open the redline. I'll try to open the redline. So, and I should also say that it's a redlined version um, of just those two. Mm -hmm. And it is a redlined version of the current town council rules. So this is not a redlined version of what we put before the council, which was draft work group rules and revised ad hoc council committee rules. So the, what you're seeing here redlined is, um, is the text of what are current um, town council rules. And when I open this document, what I'm seeing is just 10.4 ad hoc council committees. So yeah. either I'm okay, and I'm not seeing any red lining, but that's probably me yeah, and the computer. Uh, maybe that's my problem. I just um, that's something I'm not very good at doing. I can read it, but so no, I didn't know that. no I'm sure you did. If you download the red lined is red lined because okay. no, I've got I'm that sure one up. Is. So my problem is is just the simple act of downloading yeah. as opposed to just opening. 
Well, I'm going to be looking at it as it is uh, so we can move ahead. Um, and Evan, do you want to take us through this again, if you don't mind, uh, since you've done the, uh, the lion's share here? Um, and uh, let's just open this to discussion with Evan taking the lead. Sure. So um, as uh, we agreed in our last meeting, um, I took the work group, uh, the draft work group rules that I had written mm -hmm. a while back that we had then revised and sent to the council and modified them um, to be ad hoc council committee rules and then used that language to modify our current ad hoc council committee rules and then just deleted what currently is simply a header that says 10.5 work right. groups. Right. Um, you'll notice the language is almost identical mm -hmm. to um, what was our work group rules. Right. Um, except where it used to say work group, it says ad hoc committee. Right. Okay. Um, there are two things that remained. Uh, well, so the, the first, the sort of intro text is almost identical to what's our current ad hoc council committee. Uh, the only thing is I put the council and by majority vote just to, I, I'm not sure if that's important, but I think there's, um, uh, Northampton, you know, when I was looking at their select committee rules, it has to be like a two-thirds vote, and so mm -hmm. um, I wasn't sure if it was useful or necessary mm -hmm. to specify, but I figured I'd put it in and we can delete it if not. Mm -hmm. um, and then as far as the lettered list goes, um, there are two, which is F and I, that are holdovers from the original 10.4, um, but the rest is all from work group rules. Mm -hmm. The only two that I added were B and C. Um, so uh, let me do C first because it's simpler. It was just ad hoc committees may contain non-counselors um, to respond to the fact that what people really wanted out of work groups um, was the ability to have people who are not counselors, so staff or the members of the public. So that's what C is. I didn't, I didn't write out members of the public or staff or anything. I thought just saying non-counselors is a simpler way to, to encompass everything. B is something I added on my own with no direction. Um, so you know, feel free to tell me you hate it. But there was some discussion. One of the things that work group allowed is it allowed a council committee to create a work group, which many saw was necessary. Uh, we discussed that last time. I asked for some guidance on whether we wanted to retain that with ad hoc, and this committee seemed to come to consensus around the fact that a uh, council committee should not be able to start a work group, um, especially because the president is the appointing authority, um, and so it creates some awkwardness there. Um, but I still wanted to sort of respond to this desire to have council committees be able to create work groups. And so the language I have in there um, is a little bit of mix from our draft work group rules. Uh, it says standing council committees may recommend to the town council the creation of an ad hoc committee to consider an issue or measure if they determine that it is sufficiently complex to warrant in-depth research beyond the capabilities of the standing commit council committee that the longer part of that language is pulled mm -hmm. actually not just from the original draft work group rules but the actual language that was forwarded to us from rules of procedure uh, long ago. Uh, it's, it's probably an unnecessary one, but I, I, I wanted to at least throw out there that even though council committees can't themselves create an ad hoc committee, mm -hmm. um, they could request the council or recommend that the council create one. And so I, I'm open to some feedback on that, but I felt like uh, removing the ability for council committees to create these groups um, would perhaps be of concern to some counselors, and I wanted to respond to that in mm -hmm. some way. I don't know if this is the right way. So I, I'll address that one. I actually like that, because sometimes stating something in the affirmative, even if it's not needed, because by not stating it, it's by, you know, by implication allowed, um, I thought it was a good thing to state to say, hey, these might not always be creations really of the council. These may be at the request of committees instead of the council determining it. Um, so I actually liked the affirmative statement there. Um, 
E is actually where I had most of my changes. Um, C, I had a few changes, and then a lot of um, consistency changes, which you guys will hate. But um, that's all right. But, that's, uh, but I'll start with C. Uh, yeah. I hated the word contain. I was like, that just seems weird. So I wrote may include non-counselors as members because okay. just okay. the phrasing seemed really weird to me of may contain non-counselors. <laughs> so. Sure may include non-counselors as members. And you want to add a period? Yeah. That, that's weird in my eyes. So may include non-counselors as members. members. Period. Okay, that's um, now, in, I'm just mentioning oh, yep. this point. Um, when you so I had, other than really Scrivener type Consistency changes, I had no recommended changes to be from me. I think out loud here um, would be. Um, oh, I'm sorry, it's a bad, it's a bad habit. <laughs> um, so, uh, part of me doesn't want to admit that um, I'm in this box, I guess. Um, I just want to think about this for a moment out loud, I'm sorry, uh, and then I don't want to, uh, because we do have to get through this, but um, the idea is that you, I mean, I'm thinking of your own, your, your committee now, or the committee which you chair, um, would be a, a logical place where this would take, would happen, where you are seeing an issue that's sufficiently complex, and you want to create an ad hoc committee um, you are comfortable with the idea that um, you're going to have to go through the council to do it, so it's going to take some time. Um, and you're also comfortable with the idea that um, the person who actually appoints the members of this ad hoc committee, which is actually something that your committee wants to create and obviously has some ideas about, I would assume, um, the, the, the members of this committee will be appointed by the council president, not by you or by the members of your committee. Um, you're okay with, I mean, I'm just, just describing the process, not necessarily asking people to weigh in pro or con, but that's as I understand it. Um, and the reason for this is because um, we are all agreed, or we seem to be agreed as a body, that we want the council president to be the appointing authority. So the charter requires the exactly. president to that's be the appointing point. authority, that's and, and I, since we were sworn in, have stood by that right. requirement. So to now say, no, I'm not okay with that would be really weird. Right. Um, I, I am, th that was the intention of the Charter Commission and I support that intention for any council committee. So yeah, um, personally I'm okay with that. And, and as now chair of a committee that will likely be bringing these recommendations, right. I, it might slow it down a little bit, but as I think we get into a potentially slower, more deliberative manner of operating, it's not gonna slow it down no. so much mm -hmm. that it's gonna hamper the work of the committees. A two week delay in getting a committee, an ad hoc committee up and running is essentially a one meeting delay to the committee that requested it for when it might come back to that committee. And I don't see that sort of two week delay as, if the, if the issue is so complex that the committee itself doesn't feel like it can handle it, I don't see how a two week delay is going to affect its review. Okay. I, I mean, I, I agree. You know, there's there's a couple other pieces of language that I toyed with throwing in here. Um, like, I, I there's a few things I wrote and then deleted. Um, one of which was like, the president shall prioritize this recommendation and on the next meeting agenda or so to to try to give give a sense of expediency. I, I kind of hated it and so I deleted it. Right? Yeah. It's, I think that there's some. Anyways, because that was a thought. If, if we recommended the creation of an ad hoc council committee today, in theory, we could talk to Lynn and it could be on the agenda for Monday. And so it's, 
I don't feel like it's that big of a, a delay. And my hope and how this would work would be that the, the standing committee, whether it be CRC or OCA or whatever, would write out the motion and then just hand it to the council so they would see it ahead of time and then just say, all right, we want this or we don't, and then the president could appoint pretty quickly. Okay. I mean, I mean, that's how I was thinking. If, if, it, if the recommendation comes from the council committee, in theory, that recommendation includes everything included in D that the motion needs to have, and so the council committee in its recommendation would essentially be writing the motion and then in a report putting forth its reasons why it's making that recommendation. Would this include, well, apparently it would include the composition of the committee. So um, you'd be saying, and we'd like X, Y, and Z to be on this committee. Um, is that my understanding? So when you send this uh, report to the council president, you'd also be listing the names of the people that you would prefer to ha her or, or he to choose. Um, I, I'm not necessarily saying, I mean, I'm just, again, thinking this out yeah. loud. That's what I assume you would do. The council president is perfectly free to say, I don't like those names, and give you some other names. Um, and uh, that could happen, I guess is what I'm saying. I mean, it could happen that way. I read composition as essentially numbers. Okay. And also, right. you know, how many counselors versus members of the public versus, oh, hey, we're going to actually seek a staff member. Um, you know, that's how I read composition, not particularly names. I know there's a difference in opinion on the council with that one. So speaking of text that I wrote and then deleted, um, originally in D1, I had written some language to the effect of the composition of the committee um, motion cannot include names of individuals or something like that. Because um, my thought is, right, they could say this many counselors, this many members of the public, or much like we did with Percent for Art, two members of the Public Art Commission or something like that. But to me, the moment you put actual names down, you are trying to make yourself the appointing authority, and that's in conflict with the charter. And I wasn't sure if that was something that should be written into the rule, or if that was something that we just all understand, that if you put names in, you are de facto making the appointment, even though technically the president could reject the name. But maybe with these counselors, that's not understood. Well, you just had an example of your chair who, you know, reading that without thinking for a moment of the charter provision, um, uh, just thought, well, that just could easily include specific names. And I am hearing quite clearly and I think cogently that um, that really should not happen. We, we should not be sending names. Right. Um, and it's totally inappropriate, but do we need to say that? I guess Evan's question clearly is, should that be explicitly stated here so that there's no doubt and no uh, lack of uh, clarity? If this is just about the numbers and you know how many counselors, how many members of the public, and where you want staff people, but um, uh, I don't know. I guess it's just you know. I mean, it could be, but I also look at it and I go, if CRC really wanted a member and say threw it in the motion that they passed, mm -hmm. the president, in theory, when reviewing the motion sheet and seeing that would just change it before it's presented to the council. Um, I mean, take, I'm sorry, take the names Take the out. names out and change it to counselors, similar to mm -hmm. what she did when she made the motion on work groups that for the charge, you know, she made it sort of as the charge where we had for a percent for our bylaw working group. We had actually, as GOL said, well, you're essentially defining two specific individuals we should just name those individuals if you're defining them in such strict terms that we know who they are. And when she made her motion, she changed it back out to not those two, right. um, to just say members of the Percent for Art or the Public Art Commission. Um, so, I mean, someone could try to. I think the optics would really not be good if you have uh, specific names attached to the uh, yeah. creation of a committee 
um, uh, I would assume there would be uh, any uh, competent president, and we certainly have one, um, would consult uh, very closely with the chair and the committee involved and, and take their recommendations uh, very seriously. But you're right, the charter is explicit. It's the president's uh, final decision. So I guess the question here is, do we feel that um, item one, as stated, is clear enough that um, no one would assume or expect that there would actually be names? Or are, uh, or are we saying that even if someone thought that, say I said, well, does that include names? The answer is so explicit that the charter makes it clear that the president is the one who chooses who serves on these bodies. Um, so do we make, can we leave it like this? Or should we wordsmith it a bit? I would leave it because the wordsmithing, I think, would get more complicated almost. Because okay. I think it would be harder to word. It's not just number. It's also types so of maybe members. Maybe in discussion with the council when this goes before them for approval, we would uh, try one of us, hopefully the chair or someone, would be uh, make the point? Or do you think this might even have raised? I mean, I go back to the template of the charge, a charge template we adopted where the heading is composition. And it doesn't list specific names in general. Even when we know the name, say, because we're naming the town manager or the town yeah, clerk, yeah, it lists yeah. title. Um, you know, and so using the word composition here, if you relate it back to right. no, I, that I, that template, it generally doesn't list specific names. I guess I'm just thinking I would really like it to be clear to the council when this goes before them that D1 is uh, does not include specific names. Um, I don't know what Governor is going for on that one or the other. Um, again, it also can just come up in discussion, and uh, I can just bring it up myself if I want. Um, I certainly wouldn't do it if you felt that it muddied the waters, but um, I'm leaning toward the thought, let's leave it as it is. That seems to be the consensus. And uh, uh, if it comes up in discussion, it does, and we'll just we'll address it. I'm just a little concerned that in the future, some folks who aren't as conversant with the charter or familiar with the, will just assume that when they make they are making an ad hoc committee, they can sort of throw in a bunch of names of who they want the council to appoint, and that's a no-no. I mean, what we're saying is that's just not that's not uh, uh, appropriate and it's not permissible. And if you do it, the president's just going to throw them out, and uh, you shouldn't do it anyway. Yeah, we can continue to think about it. I was going to say, maybe for now, leave it. Leave it. And okay. if we see, I, I do worry actually a little bit about what Mandy said, in that I, I don't want a situation in which you have. Uh, so, so <laughs> right now we have three of the five standing committee chairs sitting right. at this table. So we obviously would not do this, <laughs> right? Um, but should there be a change of leadership in one of the Committees, I, I I feel a little uncomfortable with the situation where a committee votes to adopt, votes on a motion to send that includes names, and then the president just changes it, because I feel like that could create some conflict between the two. And I assume the president would reach out to them first and say, "Hey, just so you know, you can't do this," and change ahead of time. But I, I don't want council debate to ever be the president changed our motion or anything like that. But I also kind of feel like this is a situation where if that happens, or if some committee starts doing that, this rule can always be amended later on, or revised later on. Okay. I would probably say something at a council meeting, uh, either in my report or during the discussion on this item, unless I hear from my committee members they prefer that I not say anything. Uh, I don't, so. Just as a heads up, but I certainly would take your advice seriously. Um, just to, you know, in the course of discussing it or presenting it, I would say, you know, by the way, this does not include naming. It's you know, just the composition in the broader sense. Yes, sir, Evan. What I would probably so at our last meeting, Alyssa praised Mandy for her well-written reports that um, included sort of some discussion of the deliberation and how we got where. Mm -hmm. I I'd probably just say in the report as a starting point in the report, mm -hmm. just note that we had this discussion. Mm -hmm. 
um, with the assumption that counselors will read the report. That's right. Correct. And we'll right. see. <laughs> and so maybe one, and so they'll have, or they already have been primed for that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And if they have strong feelings, they can come into the meeting with them. So it's kind of let it lie then. Yeah, yeah and just, and just put, put it out there in the report. Okay, we had this discussion. We decided to go. We we'll leave language as it is. Names should not be in the charges. Right. But we had a discussion report. about whether to actually write that into the rules. We decided not to in the end, but at least they know that discussion happened. And then if one counselor says, eh, I really think it should be in the rules, then it can be discussed. Okay. Okay. Um. Sorry, I keep doing this. <laughs> and then it goes to mute. So audience out there is probably going to wonder why Mr. Ryan suddenly doesn't have a voice. Um, do you want to do this? I, I, do we want to talk a little bit about majority versus two-thirds? Um, Evan mentioned in Northampton it's two-thirds. I can see a kind of a reason for that, a kind of logic. Um, and uh, it might be an appropriate question raised by uh, someone on the council or even by someone here that why isn't it two-thirds uh, since these are... Um, so what are, are people have any thoughts on that? Can we talk about it for a moment? Just majority versus two thirds. Um. Any, I mean, is, is it the, I mean, one thought would be that it, it would might uh, make it harder to create these bodies. I, I mean, see, it would make it harder. Um. Uh, I, I mean, I guess my thought is majority makes sense, yet if the goal is to create less ad hoc committees, then maybe two-thirds sends the message. I'm not, you know, with the way this particular council has been voting, I'm not sure two-thirds is too hard a bar to get over mm -hmm. for ad hoc committees, but maybe creating that bar, just setting forth a higher bar, sends a message that these should not be done frequently, mm -hmm. that they should really have some thought put into them because they do require additional work outside of the standing committees and outside of sort of for the public to figure out where to go, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. are an additional mm -hmm. sort of layer into the hardness of transparency, the, the difficulty in following government. And so maybe even though the two thirds bar might not be hard to reach, maybe it would send that message. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I'm not sold on requiring it. <laughs> thoughts on that, two-thirds versus majority. So we create our council committees by majority vote. And so it seems to me like it would be a little strange for ad hoc council committee votes to be separate. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, when it came to work groups, this was actually something I was more interested in um, because I was I was more in favor of uh, for a council committee to create a work group. Um, I felt as though three votes should not be sufficient to have to create an entire, and so I, I wanted like a minimum of four, which I didn't end up writing into the rules, but this was something, when it, to me, when it's a smaller body, it makes sense to have a higher vote threshold. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. For the council, I think majority vote is fine. Um, okay. But I, I do understand, you, we don't want the council just sort of rapid fire creating ad hoc committees. So there's there's something to be said about, I, I under, Mandy's, Mandy's point I think is well taken that Likely it wouldn't be hard to get a two-thirds vote, but it at least sends a message that these shouldn't be created unless necessary. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so the percent for art um, vote was uh, nine votes, so it was just barely two-thirds, mm -hmm. but even that, which was sort of, well, it was contentious for other reasons. Um, you know, got two thirds. So I, I don't have a super strong preference on this. 
Okay. Um, it seems like we're, we're not really strong one way or the other. Um, I hear Mandy's idea of two-thirds of raising the bar, and I think that makes some sense. Evan points out that, of course, already council committees are created by a majority vote, so why are we uh, making this uh, different? So perhaps we'll leave it as it is for the moment, um, and if it comes up for discussion, unless there's a feeling that I'm not getting that sense from the other two of you that uh, there's a strong desire to change it. So I think we'll just leave it then. I uh, just wanted to have that discussion briefly. Um, mm -hmm. So now, Mandy, if we want to go back to your um, uh, items. So we've gotten through. Um, I had one other thing in D. So we've, we've made some revisions to C. Evan has entered those into the document. Um, and so go ahead, Mandy. So the word must in D. I think we've tried to stay away from must and instead use shall. Very first sentence, second sentence. Um, the motion to create an ad hoc committee shall include, shall include right. instead of must include. You got, you got it? Yep. No. And we've just tried to stay away from the word no. must. Um, and then E. Okay, go ahead. I mean, D says they can be made by motion, but I could foresee an ad hoc committee where we might want to not create it by motion, that we might actually want to charge. Um, you know, for example, our, you could consider the bylaw review committee an ad hoc committee, but it was an extensive one. It's going to be operating for a very long time. You know, this one, or, or the ranked choice voting or something like that. These that are, you know, that we expect to be operating for a year or a year and a half maybe, um, but is not going to be a standing committee if something in the future comes similar to when the state was legalizing marijuana. Um, and we needed a committee to be looking at that specific thing. It's not going to be a standing committee, but it's also not going to be a two-month thing. Um, it's going to be a longer-term ad hoc committee. It might be worthwhile to have a formal charge for that committee because it'll be easier to be found when committee membership potentially turns over and stuff. So I, I had um, some changes to this. And so the first sentence, I wanted to change the period to a comma and then say, although the council may choose to adopt one um, so that it doesn't require the charge. But you know, we could choose to put it to create this committee through a charge. Um, and then I would just delete the whole second sentence of E. Um, I found it redundant because the D mm -hmm. kind of says in a way, the purpose. I mean, it doesn't set out, you know, I mean, the composition is in D, and the purpose is kind of mm -hmm. the measure issue that'll be the committee's focus. So I found that second sentence a little bit redundant. I know it came out of our work group section, mm -hmm. and so it was a copy over, but in reading this again, I didn't think it was necessary, but I liked the idea of, again, affirmatively stating we can do it by motion, but we can also do it by charge. Okay. Evan, thoughts? So again, speaking of things that I wrote and then deleted, um, this, uh, my, the E, a previous version of the E before I actually uploaded had a third sentence that said the council may um, create a charge for a committee or something along those lines right. Right. for the same thought that there are, you know, another one, rules of procedure, right? Like, I'm glad that one had a charge. Um, yeah, right. And so I, I, and I deleted it because I felt like just saying they do not require, it doesn't prohibit, but I get your point of affirmatively stating, and so I, I'm open to that language. I agree with the second sentence. I'm not quite sure why I kept that in there because it is redundant. So I, I would actually be in favor of Mandy's language if she could repeat it and I can change right. this. Amanda, go ahead. So ad hoc committees do not require a committee charge, comma, although the council may choose to adopt one. Okay. So that item now is specifically about committee charge, and that's what's kind of clear and so forth. Okay. Good. I think it's fine. I, I agree with both of you that um, 
the second sentence really is, is redundant, uh, so then that's been said above. And um, while often we may prefer not to have it, because I assume a committee charge then has to, that does have to go to GAO, right? Mm -hmm. So it slows things down a bit. And that's good in some cases, but I think we're also trying to get some flexibility. So this, again, continues within the flexibility. You can have a charge if you feel it's necessary, but otherwise not. So I'm happy with the uh, change that Mandy recommends here. Any other uh, edit changes that you, Mandy, want to make? Or so I had just a couple of consistency edits. Um, the rest of the rules just refer to the town council as the council. So deleting the word town in the many instances, it precedes the word council. Okay. There's, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, I think I count six, six. So just a six, okay. In A, there's two. In B, there's one. In D, you got them all. Okay. Um, yep. Okay, good. And the other sort of consistency one was the title of the chart, the rule is ad hoc council committees. Yeah. And throughout, we referred to it as ad hoc committees. Should we be inserting the word council in there? I mean, it, it's kind of redundant, but not, um, mm -hmm. but wordy. It creates a lot of word wordiness to it um, and there's a lot more of those well maybe not one two three four five seven from my count um, maybe what seven but eight something like that so that that's one that I'm not as we, we don't have a consistency on that but that's what the title of the rule is so mm -hmm. it maybe that's how we should refer to them um, short other things periods need added at the end of all the sentences. Um, if this comes to the council, which I'm guessing it will, the two other things that would need to be in the motion is that we'd need to renumber all following 10, rule 10 things. Um, so I, th I think there's a bunch of them after it, so they'd need renumbered because 10.5 is being deleted and the table of contents would need updated because 10.5 is being deleted. So it would need updated for more than just page updates. It would need contents updates, um, which is an easy thing to do because I set up the table of contents to be able to update um, with the correct word sort of settings. But this would be part of the motion? I, it would need part of the motion, okay. yeah. Um, at least the table of contents I don't think we should show and then the motion I think you could just say whatever the wording is, renumber the headings for rules, you know, mm -hmm. the, how, however it would be worded. 10-9, yeah. And we should, before we do all that, we should make sure there's no cross-referencing to any of those rules. Um, one of us can be assigned to do that. I'm happy to be assigned to do that to see if that would require any changes, because that would need to be in the motion that this comes back with is the removal, you know, the, the renumbering of all those cross-references. Um, and then the one other weird consistency thing I had. Can you oh, sure. sure. Um, so, I agree that I thought it was weird that the title was ad hoc council committees and then used ad hoc committees throughout. That was, that's what our current rules do, um, which is why I did, because I thought it was weird too, but I just thought I would, I was right. making drastic changes to our current rules, but in many ways also trying to preserve them as much as I could. Um, but I thought that was weird that we did that in the original rules, um, I, but I, I, from a what's easier perspective, I would rather just delete council from the 10.4 heading and just say ad hoc committees, except that the title of this section is committees of the council and committees of the town. And so I think you do need to, even though only one of the rules is about committees of the town, which should probably just be deleted. But anyways, um, <laughs> because it just says something that we already know we can do. Um, uh, I. How do we feel? Do we want me to put ca the word council after the word ad hoc in each of these references for consistency? Or do we feel like it's unnecessary? I don't really care, but 
Well, Mandy, I know, cares. <laughs> Kevin doesn't really care. Um, um, I would I lean towards the least amount of work for uh, some ones who are already working very hard. So uh, Evan is making some changes or making changes to this document as we speak. Yeah. And um, um, I think we can leave it as it's just saying. I mean, it, it's pretty clear from context what we're talking about here. So um, I'm happy to leave it as it is. So I guess that one doesn't, it takes you two to one. But I, I think it's. But yeah. No, okay, <laughs> all right. Um, any other changes? One last oh, sure. one, because I'm going to ignore my other second to last one. The second sentence that set, starts such committees. I hate that, that word, such. Could we just say ad hoc committees? We do it everywhere else where we just say ad hoc committees and then there's this one time in the rule that fun. says such committees. <laughs> I can live with that, Evan. Okay, all right. That was it. Do you want me to check the cross-references for anything else in preparation for a motion, assuming this that passes us? That would be a kindness. Okay. <laughs> that would be a kindness. Yeah. Uh, I would, but I don't know. Okay. Um, are we comfortable with going to a vote on this? Again, there are only three members present. Um, we also would like this to get, get really through the council, though. So, um, but... Um, whether we're ready for a vote. But certainly I think we've gone through it today pretty thoroughly. We've, uh, I think we have consensus with all the changes that have been made. Um, and all the other issues that we've raised, I think would have to be raised by the council. Um, do we, are we comfortable with going ahead with the three of us? Or do you want me to postpone this vote for another two weeks? Mandy? In, with your vice president hat on, do you have any idea of what the timeline is for when Lynn wants to put this on the agenda? I know we have some very packed agendas coming up. So the October 7th agenda is packed. Um, the October 21st agenda is becoming packed. But it's not packed. <laughs> um, So, yeah, it might end up being packed. Um, so what I'm hearing, what I'm hearing from the and we don't know whether we're doing we're an October 28th. Oh, no, we are doing an October 28th council meeting um, because that's, that's the planned public forum for the master plan, it looks like. <laughs> there, there has to be a public forum on the master plan every year per the charter and we're running out of time. Um, so so that between that and the general bylaw presentation that I have my notes on that might come on the 28th, you're on bylaw review. That's not coming on the 28th? I, I sent an email to Lynn that requested five minutes of time on the 21st, and then okay. the bylaw review shouldn't be there until December 2nd. OK, because I had some notes from, I guess, a previous mentioned somewhere that it might be ready for the 28th, because that would pack the 28th then. Um, okay. Um, so potentially if we have a meeting on the 28th, which I think we are because of my notes, but my notes may be wrong on when that public forum's happening. Um, we could put it to the 28th. Um, I, I, from my own scheduling point of view for GOL, the next thing on today's agenda, or one of the next things coming up, is Rule 10.9 yep. liaisons. Right. I almost feel like if we're going to be bringing changes to Rule 10, maybe we bring them all at once instead of Rule 10.4, you know, so that people can get into Rule 10 
just like we're doing rule eight together, maybe we could do a rule 10 night mm -hmm. that has both these liaison changes that were talked about at the retreat and these ad hoc committees. And we, we don't necessarily have to have them on the same motion, but we could maybe talk about them the same night. Or I, I, <laughs> Evan is Oka chair is like, I don't know. <laughs> Absolutely nothing to do with that. I'm pretending Oka doesn't exist right now for other reasons. Um, right camera. Um, my, my concern, I, I like the idea of presenting all of Rule 10 together, so liaisons is part of that. I don't know if we intend to have a full discussion and vote on that today. Um, if we do, I would say let's vote on all of, let's vote on these and try to get them on the council agenda for the 28th. The problem is if we don't do it today, we don't meet again until the 23rd. And I and I don't think that it's enough time to vote on things on the 20. I don't feel comfortable voting the morning of the 23rd on both of these things and then having them on the agenda for the 28th and having George like write a report. I mean, you could pre-write the report easily, but it's still it's a very quick turnaround, but then that would push stuff out to the 18th of, I know and and the 18th is our only meeting in November so it's likely to be packed as we're determining I know ECAC is hoping to be on the agenda for the 18th um, so I would say this all started with should we vote on this now my only hesitation with not voting on this, so we had essentially Steve's consent last meeting. My only hesitation is we haven't gotten the input of Pat, and she was someone who was actually fairly in favor of maintaining work group rules, mm -hmm. but I, I don't necessarily know that we have the luxury of waiting. Right. So I would say let's just do it. We can always vote. We can, then you, George, you could either talk to Lynn yourself or authorize me to talk to her about agenda on this. Um, but I would recommend you talk to her about when to get this on the agenda. And if it's not gonna be on the 21st or the 28th because of her stance, um, we could always bring it back for another round here when Pat is in, in, in attendance. And, and approved it, we would bring it back and do it again? We could, I'm not saying it's wise, I'm just saying we could, if it, if it ends up being sat on by the president for yeah, yeah. months. I mean, if a member like Pat really felt strongly that she wanted to. And it's not gonna be in front of the council, yeah, then we no, could I mean, bring it back it because back. it's being sat on, but if we voted today, as Evan said, it would allow the president to start feeding no. it into her agenda it, it setting. Knows that, that the yeah. She needs to figure out how important it is and where she wants to put it on the agenda. Right. So I think I'm for voting today and seeing where she'd put it. All right, well, I'm hearing um, amongst the three of us a consensus for moving ahead with a vote um, on uh, the uh, uh, revisions to rules of procedure, rule 10.4 and 10.5. Um, can we construct a motion? Can someone construct a motion that which uh, we can then act on? So I'm open to a motion um, on this item, if we can uh, construct one. So Mandy, what do you, what do you have? Um, I move to recommend to the recommend that the town council adopt the revisions to rule. 10.4 and 10.5 and the resulting Scrivener revisions. Um, so we should simply say as amended? As amended at the October 2nd, 2019 GOL meeting. Okay. I'm gonna have the note taker repeat that in just a moment so we're clear on what it states. Um, Mandy can repeat that if, if you need it. Yeah. Um, so 
Understood in that motion. And I'll second that. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor. It's been seconded by Councilor Ross. Any further discussion? Seeing no discussion, um, I'm ready to call the question. Um, all those, <coughs> excuse me, in favor of this motion, please signify by raising your hand and say aye. 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 All those opposed? So none opposed. So it's again three in favor, uh, none opposed, and two absent. And Councillor Ross, go ahead. So I, um, I was taking, keeping track of this. So I can send a clean version to you, right. but I just, just want to be clear. Mandy, you're going to go through and cross check references do we want to present this as just this or do we want to present a full rules document that has everything or does that really depend on the results of Mandy's work so I think given the scope of the changes to 10.4 that we just recommended mm -hmm. that the motion maybe be rescind and adopt a new 10.4 delete 10.5 and renumber whatever appropriately. I can attempt to craft a motion, but instead of presenting a redlined version of 10.4, it might be better to ask that the motion be, because otherwise we have to show, we have to, the motion is like this redlined and there's so many, a repeal and replace of 10.4 might be the cleanest motion that which means that's what would be presented. That doesn't mean we don't show them a redlined version, but the clean version is what would, in theory, be part of the motion. And here, we're, just for clarity's sake, um, we're talking about the motion to the council. Um, the, yeah. Not what we've just been doing. No. So this is something in the future when presented to the council. And um, what I'm hearing is that it would be a, uh, a rather broad brush. And Mandy would, would work on the language for that. Um, would we be thinking of including, uh, again, it sounded like earlier we were suggesting it might also include another, you said we'd do um, 10.9 as well. We try to arrange it so both would be, or are we thinking of two different nights, or is that just not? I think they'd be two different motions. Yeah. I'll definitely be two different motions. But, but potentially the same night if we're ready, so yeah. It would, be, it would be GOL night, and so that in communicating to um, in communicating to uh, Lynn, um, I should suggest that that's what we have in mind, is trying to do them both together. And that would certainly impact her in terms of agenda. So we'd like to do both 10.4 and 5, and also, what is it, 10.9. Okay. Do you want me to work on the language to that motion? That would be okay. appreciated. Um, so I'm ready to move ahead to the next item, um, which is item number four, related to non-voting liaisons, which is uh, Board's Procedure Rule 10.9. If everyone's ready to do that, I can give Mandy a moment. I think she's trying to go ahead and take, take your time. Is this the one I'm presenting, George? I believe it is. <laughs> uh, I hope so, because otherwise it's going to be a very brief discussion. So <laughs> I pretty much just uploaded this from my notes at the retreat, so apologize if it's not readable, because um, it's how I just kind of notated it at the retreat. But at the retreat, um, the council obviously had a discussion on non-voting liaisons, and some of the things that came out said maybe um, we need to look at revising the rule. And so apparently I have some notes that I might not even understand myself. Um, 
but but these were the notes I took during that discussion on what counselors were looking for. It looks like the underlined language was um, that counselors were thinking about not commenting during public comment instead of rather than during public comment, I think is what my note is um, indicating. And then the underlined not expected to be seated, I think counselors were wanted clarity on what that meant in sort of instead of not expected won't be seated with the voting members or or you know some sort of language that was much clearer on that expectation instead of the wishy-washy that might sort of be there now mm -hmm. um, and then the notes at the bottom add that liaisons are not allowed to express personal opinions um, the the clarity on seating and speaking with the chair um, I think are what relates to those underlines at the top of the second paragraph and guidance on how to speak that we should so show in there that um, liaisons should not speak at a meeting unless recognized by the chair. Um, mm -hmm. And then instead of the word can, the word may. Those are the notes I had from the retreat. Mm -hmm. Again, we only have three members present. Um, I don't have a sense really of how strongly either Evan, excuse me, ever uh, Steve or uh, Kat feel on this. Um, do we want to even um, have a discussion? Um, do we want to postpone until the next meeting when everyone has a chance to read this carefully? Um, I'm, I'm open to suggestions here how to proceed. We can just go through it together and talk about it for about 10, 15 minutes at most. Or we could postpone until ideally we have at least four, if not five members present. Any thoughts on that? If we want to postpone, I could ins turn these notes into potential l changes of language instead of just the notes mm -hmm. that might mm -hmm. make it easier to discuss if there's a draft rewording. Mm -hmm. And we can also just discuss for a few minutes and give uh, Mandy some more thoughts about how to, to shape this. But uh, Evan, what are your thoughts? Do you have some uh, particular thoughts on this at the moment? Do you want to uh, go through it line by line, or do you want to uh, um, postpone after and let Mandy crack some more of her first her thought? Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking at this also through um, my role on OCA. Right. Um, and so OCA is going to be taking up liaisons at their October 21st meeting. I have no sense of how long that will take or if it will be accomplished in one meeting. Right. Um, but my original intent was for OCA to talk about it and hopefully make some decisions on October 21st to be on the council's agenda for October 28th. Um, with that said, I have some desire to see these rules in place prior to liaisons being appointed. <laughs> that timing already doesn't work. Right. If I actually do want them on October 28th, it might work if, we, if I say, OCA is going to vote on these on October 21st, but we don't want them to go before the council until November 18th, which I think is reasonable. Um, but considering that rule changes need two readings, um, if we want to do, I, w I would like, long story short, I would like the rule change to be adopted either before or at the same meeting as liaisons being appointed. Mm -hmm. And so I'm fine putting this off until we have a fuller committee or until we have a little bit more of a proposal other than notes, but also recognizing that the, more, the longer it takes for us to do this, I will probably tell the president, regardless of what OCA decides on, 20, on the 21st, to hold off on putting on the council agenda until the second reading of this revised rule. And so the sooner we do this, the sooner we can actually have liaisons, because I don't want to appoint liaisons before we revise this rule. 
So if I come back with language on the 23rd, we can probably vote on the 23rd here, which could put a first reading on the 28th, assuming we have a meeting, and then in November, the second reading and the OCA recommendations could be heard together at that one November meeting then. <laughs> might be overloaded. Um, yeah. The other option is to wordsmith it, sorry George, okay. wordsmith it now, vote today, and try and put it on both the 21st and the 28th for OCA 28. We said we want to pair yeah. all of our Rule 10 revisions, which I do like that idea. Yeah. But we just talked about putting work group, or I gotta stop saying that, ad hoc council committees yeah. on the 28th, not the 21st. Do we want to try and put them on the 21st instead? I'm beginning to lose track of whose agenda we're talking about, the council's agenda or our agenda. <laughs> I think we as a body simply have to proceed uh, with a limit to what we can control in terms of what goes on the council agenda, what doesn't. Um, I hear Evan's concern about pointing liaisons before we have clear rules as to what they can or cannot do. Um, I'm somewhat more loosey-goosey about that, but that's maybe not a good thing. Um, it certainly does seem reasonable that you would like to have uh, a clearer uh, sense of what the role of a liaison is before you actually start appointing them. So it just may turn out that, that liaisons aren't going to get appointed as quickly as we would really like. It's already been longer than we'd like, but it may be even longer than we'd like. Um, while we um, do what we have to do, um, we have what we'd be wordsmithing today are just notes. Um, it probably makes sense for us to wordsmith something that is closer to a, to a finished product, such as we did today with, with what Evan did. Um, so it probably does make sense to um, postpone this until Mandy has a chance to put it into a form that uh, in theory could be wordsmithed uh, by the committee and put into a finished product and, and voted on. Um, and also hopefully we'd have the other two members of that committee present. And maybe we're just gonna have to not try to, I, mean, I don't think we can really um, fit this, our work into the larger work of the council, the agenda setting and so on, and also the, the idea of trying to get liaisons up and running. Um, we can only do what we can do. And we can do it expeditiously, but we don't want to rush it. And I think if we try to wordsmith this now, um, it just, uh, we'd have a great discussion, we always do, but <laughs> it's, uh, uh, it still would need to have to go back to, to Mandy to put into some formal shape, and then it would still have to come back to this committee for final voting. So I say let's, let's have Mandy, uh, if she's willing, uh, put this into uh, a more formal shape. Uh, could be posted, would be posted, I assume, on our, for our next agenda. And so everyone would have a chance to look at it in advance, and I would certainly encourage them to do so, so that we could get at it. Um, but Evan, I don't see that really, that doesn't really address your concerns, so what are your thoughts here in terms of, I'm feeling the timing here, we can only control our own timing. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah. I'm fine with this. Okay. Uh, the, there are rules, th there are rules in currently place. Yeah. It's just the We're changes that, fine. so. You know, you could go ahead if, if we appointed liaisons, there would be rules they have to follow because, yeah. every, you know, we've already adopted them, so. I know, I think I, Evan's wearing two hats here yeah. and it's kind of weird, right? <laughs> the Oka part of his brain is <laughs> talking to the Chihuahua yeah, part yeah. of his brain and they're not having a happy conversation. No, no. So. I, I, I will, as chair of Oka, ask the president not to bring forth a liaison's discussion until we're having the second reading of these rules. Um, and I actually have no issue if that's not until November or even December because I don't think that uh, these committees can't survive another month and a half without liaisons, um, but it might conflict with the expectations of some other counselors. I don't have an issue with that. Um, and if this committee doesn't either, then I'm fine and I think it, I would rather look at a proposal than notes, so. Yeah. All right, so we are going to, um, as I said, put this off for any formal discussion or voting until the next farewell meeting, and in the interim, Mandy will 
will craft something which we will be able to discuss. That brings us to item agenda number five, uh, advise on a procedure for posting and cataloging adopted council and town policies and regulations, including adopted prior to the change in government. I have absolutely no thoughts on this whatsoever, so I hope someone does. Um. I'll, take, uh, I'll at least explain why this is on here. So um, I put, I'll put this on the, here, the <laughs> rules of procedure ad hoc committee gave us, the GOL committee, a list at the adoption of the original adoption of the rules of things to look at. And on this list was this advice on a procedure for posting and catalog adopting policies and council and town policies and regulations. So mm -hmm. there's been complaints um, and concern that the council or the select board or someone else adopts a town-wide policy. Um, think our public ways policy that we've adopted or as we saw this commemorative flag policy we've been flying in and out a couple times mm -hmm. um, trying to work on and it gets adopted and then it kind of gets lost in the ether in terms of is it still in effect? Where do you find it? Mm -hmm. um, apparently mm -hmm. the town has adopted a dark streets type policy about street lights, but it's hard to find it. Mm -hmm. um, and so the thought was, should have GOL talk about what should the town do when policies like that are adopted either by the town council, by, by some executive board or by another town committee you know, if Transportation Advisory Committee or the Planning Board adopts a policy or the Housing uh, you know, Trust adopts a policy, mm -hmm. where do they get housed and could there be a central repository of them? So that's why it's on here. Right. For, um, sure. The town, there is a web page right now that has been created for town council policies on the town website, it might not be easily found, findable, but there is one, and it's where our current rules of procedure sit. Um, I'm not sure what else is on it, because I didn't think to look this morning, but it is where the rules of procedure sit. So, I mean, our recommendation could be as simple as adopt, you know, create a web page that says town policies with a subheading town council, a subheading something else, and then just link to all of them. So I, the web page Mandy is referring to, if you go to uh, the town council, amherst.ma.gov slash town council, there's a web page which actually is already labeled town policies. It's just that the only things that are there, there are three things, which is publication of candidate statements, rules of procedure, and public ways policy under a subheading town policies adopted by the Amherst Town Council. But the web page itself is labeled town policies, which honestly has been a point of confusion for me for longer than I want to admit, mm -hmm. um, and has been something that I've been curious about but haven't brought up because I don't want to admit that my life has become so boring that something that causes me concern is the mislabeling of a web page on the town council site. So I have... I have kept this to myself to date, but but it has struck me that there is a web page that is already labeled town policies with a subheading town policies adopted by the Amherst Town Council and nothing else. So it seems to me that we there should just be also a heading town policies adopted by the town manager uh, and town policies adopted by the select board and we can just populate them into an existing in this existing web page. Town council and town executive or something, so yeah. Again, my first instinct is to, to say we can only control what we can control. So uh, we can certainly address the issue of, of making sure there's a place, which there already is a place apparently, but making sure that it's properly labeled, I think Evan is right, <coughs> that does matter, um, regarding town council policies. Um, so at the very least, we could address our energies to making sure that there is a clearly labeled uh, web page that is a, a place for people to go for any town council policy. Um, but the other question that's being raised here is that, of course, there are many, many policies this town has, and citizens might have a legitimate question, you know, what's the policy of X? And my initial thought would be, well, go to the uh, 
in a relevant committee or a place and, and find it. Um, but there does seem to be some thought in some quarters that you should have a page for all policy. Um, and we've been asked to sort of think about that and maybe even plan about it. Um, I'm not sure I actually agree with that idea that there should be a place to go for all policies because we're going to find out there are a lot of them and what's a policy and, you know, it's going to get pretty dicey. Um, and it's certainly a job that, that we are probably not suited for and it's, we're now creating more work for uh, beleaguered staff. Um, so I guess I'm, I would like us to focus first on just town council policies. Uh, if we could just identify what they are, I'm not saying we do it right now, but we identify what they are and we, we, make, we, are, uh, we know where they are going to live and that that place is labeled in such a way that we can easily tell someone, if you want to know about town council policies, they're all here at this, at this location. And it doesn't say town policies, it says town <laughs> council policies. Um, that would be my preference first, because it seems like that's a doable, manageable thing. Um, the second larger question is, and it's been raised, and it's, it's, we've been asked to think about it, is what do we want to do, uh, or do we want to do anything about the larger question of policies across the board, whether it's you know a particular uh, board, or it's a town manager policy, right? I mean, this, this could really get um, hairy. Um, so that's a legitimate question. We need to talk about it a little bit, at least today, not too much. Um, Mandy. Alyssa, um, in, during the rules process, when she proposed adopting an appendix to the rules that would list forth policies and regulations currently in effect, created her own list of them. Mm -hmm. And we do have that. And there are 15. Um, I don't know. So, I'm sorry, these are council policies? Well, no. no. So I'll, I'll just read the titles okay, of the policies so that people get an idea of what she did. Um, remote participation policy, which is one that maybe we should put on a town council, even though it's not a council policy. Uh, we yeah. abide by it. Um, reappointment policy. I think that's for the, appoint the reappointment policy related to, it says a appointed committee handbook. So I think it's to committees. Um, parking regulations but it's apparently missing a couple of actions, she says. Permit parking regulations, lunch cart rules regulating the use and operation, taxi rules regulating the use and operation, commemorative flag policy, which we're working on right now ourselves, complete streets policy, DPW policy for approval of major transportation or roadway projects, public shade tree regulations, filling elected board vacancies, uh, select board FY, and then some that relate specifically to certain years, select board FY20 budget policy guidelines, finance committee preliminary FY20 budget policy guidelines, select board FY19 town manager performance goals, and financial management policies and objectives. So that one might not be specific to a year, but the other ones that I just, the last, the three before that are sort of year specific. So those are the lists she came up with. I don't know whether it is complete, but it's at least a place to start. Absolutely. Um, right, right. And this list is, just for my sake, Alyssa's list is where again? It's on? I pulled it out of our council pack, our GOL meeting packet for the September 11th meeting. So it's 9-11 GOL packet. Yep. And this is something she created in a document of her own concoction. It's not something that's available on the web at the moment for anyone in the town to access. It's just a- uh, Other than in our packet. Right. <laughs> yes, right. yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> And that's a place to start, and um, the chair could start there, and, uh, but I, I could use some direction or guidance um, or yeah, thoughts on this. Do you want me to go to that uh, site, go to that uh, list of Alyssa's, and at least that would give me something to think about, because um, it certainly addresses exactly what I raised. Most of those are not actually town council policies. Um, yet, they would be things that someone dealing with the town council might like to know. So I can understand the idea that uh, you might like to have some things on your page, imaginary page, that wouldn't strictly be town council policies, but policies the town council follows and would be relevant to many things we do. And it would make sense, perhaps, to have them all in one place. Um, but a kind of page that has every policy of every committee and every board strikes me as, 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 as not a good idea. So could we start with that list and at, 
and make a recommendation to the council, because we were supposed to advise the council on this, that says, here was a list created by a fellow counselor. Of those on this list, we recommend that the council advise the town manager to post on this page, town policies page that's already been created, the following policies. And at least start with that and see which ones of these that were on that list we might recommend posting. I, that, that's at least a way forward. It might not finish the job, but it's a way forward. Yeah. Go ahead. So like eight minutes ago, I liked the idea of having a town web page that listed all the policies separated by the authority. Right. Then you read that list. Mm -hmm. And I think I changed my mind because I went, well, some of those are regulations, not policies. Well, right. what's the difference? Well, but if you're going to do lunch cart regulations, shouldn't you do all Board of Health regulations? Would that be on there? Right. And then I started driving myself crazy. Um, I, I still kind of like that idea. I don't think it's a good use of this body's time to determine which goes on there and which doesn't. It seems to me like we should be making sure that all of the relevant town council policies are available, but beyond that, I don't think we need to bring in all of these others I think what we could do is we could say to the town manager, you should talk to IT and think about getting a, a, like a repository for all policies that someone can go to. Because honestly, what would actually be great is if you could just go, and maybe you already can, I don't know, go to like a web page and type in lunch cart, and then it scrolls you down to the lunch cart regulations, right? Something like that. To me, that's beyond what this committee should be doing. And I think we can say to the town manager, you should consider this, but it's there. To, to what George is in, or one of you said, I don't remember now. As far as getting the correct town council policies, um, I think that if we have ideas of some that should be on that web page that I read that's mislabeled um, and aren't there, I think that we can I don't think we should waste the town council's time by having a town council discussion and vote on which policy should go on the website. I think it's within our jurisdiction to decide that as this committee and to just say to the town manager, GOL wants you to add these. Or the town clerk, or, or our clerk of the council. Thank you, that um, one. Because it's a town council webpage, so I think that would go to our clerk. One thought I had, sorry, George. Go ahead. Um, Please. Is this better something for goals ad hoc committee now to say, as you're formulating stuff, think about creating a goal to, because it really, most of this is an, is an executive side of the town, not a legislative side, um, to create a goal for the manager to collect and organize and post in a central repository or centralized location, all town adopted town policies and regulations. Would that is is that maybe where it goes? Because then it if we adopt it as a goal, it then goes to the manager where it probably regularly belongs. So maybe that's something to we as a committee just forward on to the ad hoc goals committee of hey, we want you to consider this as a goal for the manager in the upcoming year. This collection of policies for ease of transparency or resident use or however we'd formulate it. Okay. I like that, because you're right, I think that this is something the town manager has to direct his staff to do, and so maybe it's not something, I, I, don't, I really don't feel like it sits well within this committee, and that makes more sense, because once you set it as a goal, he'll be evaluated on it, and so he would have to do it. Um, and I like it because it takes it off of our plate. <laughs> and puts it onto a committee that I don't serve on. 
that's that's, yeah, unfortunately, it's a committee I serve on. So, so, so is that well? She hasn't appointed it yet. You may, <laughs> you may be off of it. Who knows? Um, um, I, I have no problem with that. It's just that um, I do think there is an issue with um, that we could address if, if you are in agreement, but maybe not. That um, there are policies that the council is crafting or has crafted, and there are some policies that directly relate to or would seem reasonably to be related to our work. Um, and there is an existing page that's mislabeled that could be, that could be, so is it, do you want the chair to look at that town policies webpage, which he has not done, and take some notes, and to look at Alyssa's list, and uh, ponder whether it's worth uh, our time and discussion to craft something specifically related to town council policies. Um, and then in addition, uh, the chair could, or the committee could go ahead and advise the subcommittee on goals to um, urge the town manager to create a much more elaborate and complex, or right, relating to town policies in general. D so specifically, do you want the chair, do you think it's worth his time or the committee's time, more importantly, to um, try and come up with something based on Alyssa's document and the existing town policies webpage mislabeled um, for this committee to look at and discuss in terms of what they think is would make sense for us to, to, to put out there. So people come to us, we say, well, I don't know about the town manager, I don't know about all those other folks, but here's where our stuff is. Um, is that worth pursuing right now? And I'd be willing to try and do something with it, or do you think we should just right now leave it to some future date and just say, Goals committee, urge the manager to do it. So the three policies listed on that page are the three that I have noted as adopted by the town council. I don't think it's missing any the town council has formally adopted. All three are there. Our th all three are listed there that the council has adopted. Um, there's others we have to follow, like that remote participation that, that might, aren't there might that might be appropriate for this page. Right. Um, but, but I think a motion that I, I'd be willing to make that directs the chair to contact the incoming chair or the members of the goals ad hoc committee with our recommendation that they consider as part of the town manager's goals for the upcoming year. You know. Well, I don't know if we need that, that as a motion. I think but, we just, or we can just direct you direct to, to do that. that. I think that, I think I that might be able to solve our thing, get it off our agenda. And you're okay. I mean, your thought right now is that, that the three policies that we have created are available for the public, and they can find them if they want them. And um, the other additional ones, we'll just for the moment we'll wait on that. I mean, okay. I don't have any thoughts on that. So the direction is to um, pass the message along to the ad hoc uh, goals committee, and um, for the moment we're going to let this sit. I will actually take some look at this, but because I haven't before. Um, item agenda six, we're running out of time. That's not uncommon. Um, as we look at the remaining items on the agenda, six, seven, eight, we do not have public presence, so there's no need for nine. Um, so we have six, seven, eight, ten, and we do have 11, actually. So maybe we need to... Uh, I'm open to suggestions here, but I'm thinking of jumping to 11. Um, actually, we could do 10. Actually, the, the minutes are there. I did make them, but there, is a, there are a couple of problems, so maybe we'll just post, we'll deal with that. Um, we'll postpone 10. Um, but the minutes uh, have been posted. Um, there are one or two gaps that I need. Um, my notes are not sufficient. Uh, otherwise, I think we're fine. Um, We've been asked to, and I'm going to jump to 11 unless there's strong feeling, um, and we're going to have to skip the other items for the moment um, unless we can come back to them. We've been asked to um, consider a um, proclamation, and this came somewhat in a roundabout fashion, but um, as they sometimes seem to do. Can people open this item? This is has to do with the Kanagasaki resolution. Um, and um, if people can open that. Um, 
this has been uh, presented to us. I think what we have in front of us here is, um, uh, sorry, where is it? Do you want me to give some up? Yeah. Okay, okay. background on this. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we have a Kanagasaki sister city in Japan. And last spring, when generally every spring, um, some students, middle school students from Kanagasaki visit our middle school and are housed by some of our middle school families. Um, and we have had that relationship for almost a quarter century now, I believe, um, 1993 um, and beyond. And so this year, the program in Kanagasaki that that exchange is run under is celebrating its 40th anniversary, the lifelong learning program. And um, Councillor Steinberg, who has been as a member of the select board, um, he attended Kanagasaki's um, celebration in the anniversary of the founding of that town when he was a select board member as a delegate from the town of Amherst and, and has been involved in the sister city committee, thought that it would be appropriate for the town council and this upcoming celebration, which is in about two weeks, um, the 19th of October, mm -hmm. to send over a proclamation from the town council, sort of re, you know, proclaiming our sister city relationship and celebrating their 40th anniversary of the lifelong learning program that sort of created our sister city relationship. And so I think what he did was took the proclamation that was probably passed by the select board back yes. at the anniversary of the founding of the town mm -hmm. um, and that he took over then and crafted it a little bit to make it more applicable to today or add some additional items. And it is now presented to us um, to try and get it out of GOL for a vote at town council on the 7th. Okay, and so... We Obviously, it doesn't have a seal on any of that on because it's being done very quickly. Right. Um, actually, yours truly tried to do what Andy did and create it with the seal, but that failed miserably. I don't know why, but that's... Uh, but we do have the proclamation and we do have it I think in rough, in pretty good form. I found there's one, I think, small typo that the computer points out. There's a double the, and the now therefore. Um, but other than that, um, and I just, the title, uh, normally we have something like Puerto Rican Day Proclamation or something in the title, but here, try, I tried to, I actually created the title for this in my version, and it's like two lines long. <laughs> it it, it could be something like <laughs> Proclamation on the anniversary of the Kanagasaki Lifelong Learning Program. It's long, That's but... Right, yeah. <laughs> um, so it, 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 it's it, better than Town of Amherst, Massachusetts Proclamation. Right, <laughs> right, right. So um, it would be, in essence, uh, that would be one change you could make. Is anyone able to make these changes? Thank you, because I'm just scrolling here. Okay. It would be essentially uh, Town of Amherst Proclamation either on or to cel or to celebrate, celebrate or, or it could be on the occasion of, well, that's the wording of the, uh, uh, celebrating the 40th anniversary of the founding of Kanagasaki's lifelong learning program. Those are the two lines, not four. So again, um, Town of Amherst, is that how we say it? Town of Amherst Proclamation, Celebrating, is that what we want? Right now I typed proclamation on the occasion of the 40th anniversary of the founding of Kanagasaki's lifelong right. learning programs. That's really long. It could be proclamation celebrating the 40th anniversary of Kanagasaki's lifelong learning programs. It would be a little bit shorter. I kind of like your first version actually, even yeah. though it's a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah it's kind of nice. But and then underneath I just left town of Amherst. Anyway, the thought is something like that rather than just proclamation would be appropriate. Um, we were deleting the extra the and the now therefore. Right. And, and you are correct that Andy did take the, uh, the proclamation uh, and basically uh, 
deleted a number of items that are no longer really appropriate uh, to this and inserted one, which is whereas the town of Kanagasaki was the first town in Japan to create a lifelong learning center and is a national model. And um, that is based on some article that uh, he forwarded to us. So the assumption is that is correct. <laughs> I haven't done any further research other than what Andy gave me. Um, but it uh, seemed like a nice touch, assuming do that's correct. Do you know why he highlighted the homestead portion? I have no idea. So if we look uh, at that, it okay. uh, has a special Emily Dickinson section, created some gifts from the town of Amherst to Jones Library and the homestead and the homestay. And I assume we want a comma there, don't we? Uh, is this the Oxford comma? An Oxford comma. Because it's then, and a separate clause. And a separate clause, that's correct. And has expanded that collection with items obtained during visits to the town of Amherst. I don't know. Shall we just leave it? It's a little awkward, actually. The Jones Library and the homestead. And, and well, we could say, the and the Emily Dickinson homestead. Yeah. And what, what the two ands have me puzzled. Uh, and the homestead and has expanded, is not ends. Right? Could end the sentence. Yeah. Oh, the whereases are supposed to be one sentence at a time, aren't they? I mean, it could introduce a separate whereas, and whereas, that's back to the question of why it's here at all, um, and I don't know the answer to that. So uh, page, with all due respect to the author yes. of this proclamation, and it's being written by Dr. Wood. who is great, what is this? Because you're right, each whereas is meant to be one line, right? Because it's each where, right? so for instance, first whereas, right? should have the first two, the first three whereases have a comma before the and, whereas the rest of them have a semicolon before the and. So there's some inconsistency there, but these are meant to be sort of one sentence, semicolon, one sentence, semicolon, one sentence, semicolon. I mean, that's the structure of a proclamation. Right. And yet the majority of these are multiple sentence whereases, mm -hmm. which right. is completely wrong for the, format of this. Could just add the whereases before each individual each sentence. sentence. I, that seems, okay. I mean, it would be long. But I will start doing that so that then we can reread this. Yeah, right. I have other things. Um, All right, go ahead. In the. Want right. semicolons or commas before the end? Semicolons, semicolons is how all of our proclamations yeah, have been. Um, in our now therefore section, uh, in the second paragraph, he capitalizes sister city, which is not capitalized in the final whereas. I don't know if sister city is intended to be capitalized or not. Right. We should make a decision on that. Is this an official title that's a proper noun that should be capitalized or is it right. more descriptive? Mm -hmm. Sister, Sister City also appears in the one, two, three, four. Well, Mandy's changing all of them, whereas is anyway. So. One, two, three, four. And the fifth and sixth, whereas we have lower the one, two, three. Yeah, where? Sure. Really? Two, three, four. The center it's might be different than the program. I, I, yeah, I don't. That I'm not as concerned about because the lifelong learning center is a thing. Lifelong learning programs. Program shouldn't be capitalized, but sister city is it capitalized or not? Because it's okay, so it needs to be capitalized in those two places where it's currently not. to insert something here just for the committee's um, knowledge that we have to respect the uh, to our time limit that our note takers are working under. They, they don't get overtime and so um, we may have to just uh, dismiss her and finish the notes ourselves or we will just have to. Um, we do need to wordsmith this and we need to approve it. Perhaps we can do that in seven minutes or less um, but we do need a hard stop at 1230 or actually five minutes according to that clock. 
um, so Megan can um, go on for the rest of her life. Um, so just a note there. You have basically five minutes to uh, um, complete wordsmithing. And Mandy will do the wordsmithing, and we'll have that document. Um, do we want to just go ahead and uh, formally approve this as amended, even though we haven't finished amending it? <laughs> um, and take your time. Okay, take we'll your time. Do it as is tonight. All right. Now, therefore, is can be multiple sentences, right? I think yeah. Okay, so I think I've got them all now. Okay. Um, do we want to go through it uh, one last time? Um, we're down. Shall to I read it very uh, quickly? <laughs> can sorry. I read it very quickly? Go ahead and read it. So the title is Proclamation on the Occasion of the 40th Anniversary of the Founding of Kanagasaki's Lifelong Learning Programs. Mm -hmm. Uh, town of Amherst, Massachusetts. Whereas Amherst, Massachusetts has an historic and long-term friendship with Japanese and its people, Japan and, and its people. Yes, yes. And whereas the town of Kanagasaki was the first town in Japan to create a lifelong learning center and it is, is a national model. Semicolon, right? Uh, semicolons time. each That's time. Right, and right. whereas the lifelong learning center building includes the town library and whereas the town of Kanagasaki library has a friend, has a special Emily Dickinson section created from gifts from the town of Amherst, the Jones Library, and the Emily Dickinson Homestead. And whereas the town of Kanagasaki has expanded that collection with items obtained during visits to the town of Amherst. Okay. Um, I mean, that could just be deleted, quite frankly. So, yeah. anyway. And whereas the towns of Kanagasaki and Amherst are committed to the education of youth and to lifelong learning, should that lifelong learning be capitalized? I don't think so. No. Um, and whereas both towns maintain quality schools, libraries, and continuing education opportunities for all ages and recognize that sister city relationships with communities and other nations are vital to these goals, and whereas in 1987, Kanagasaki and Amherst began an education exchange program for students, and whereas groups of Kanagasaki students make an... I'm going to ...annual visits during which they stay in the homes of Amherst families, attend an Amherst public school and see an American town similar in size to their home. And whereas this relationship was expanded with a sister city agreement in 1993, renewed in 2013 and 15, and whereas the affiliation allows for the exchange of officials from each community, cooperation between libraries and schools, and whereas the relationship brought delegations from Amherst to Kanagasaki to celebrate the anniversary of the founding of the new, new town of Kanagasaki and to commemorate this anniversary of the founding of the lifelong learning programs. Just, I'm sorry, th there was a problem with the original text. Did you fix that? Was it and brought, you fixed that, thank you. Well, no, literally, and brought delegations from Amherst, including to celebrate. Okay, you caught that. The new whereas before that, the affiliation allows for the exchange of officials from each community and cooperation between the libraries and schools need. Yes, I fixed the one in the uh, delegation yeah, one. 60 seconds. So now, therefore, the town of Amherst congratulates the people in the town of Kanagasaki on the occasion of the 40th anniversary of the founding of Kanagasaki's lifelong learning programs. We affirm our friendship and our commitment to our sister city relationship that binds us together through educational, cultural, enterprise, economic, and other exchanges with the Oxford comma added, strengthens the friendship and mutual understanding between our ta two towns, adds to the goodwill between our countries, and strives to contribute to the peace and prosperity of the world. In witness whereof, Amherst Town Council voted to cause the official seal of the town of Amherst, Massachusetts to be fixed, affixed to this proclamation this 7th day of October 2019. Signed. All right. There's a motion to approve this uh, as amended. The, the signature part shouldn't just say signature. It should have language. Like, like, we will. In our, yeah. 
Sure. Trust that Athena will get it onto the correct paper and do that properly. So we're satisfied with the wording and the changes. I move to declare this proclamation, whose title I already forgot, but meant amended. as amended, I'm clear, sorry. consistent, and actionable. Okay. Second. All right. All those in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 All those opposed? So this motion with, to approve the uh, declare. declare the proclamation. proclamation celebrating on the occasion of the 40th anniversary, the anniversary of the of founding of Kanagasaki's, Kanagasaki's Lifelong Learning, Learning Program. As clear, consistent, and actionable. That is the motion. Has it, has it been moved by? Yes, it's, it's been moved. We've passed it, thank you. <laughs> we need to get Megan out of here. Um, and Thank when you. there's three of us, it tends to never be the chair, so. <laughs> we try not to do it that way, but. All right, so um, we have completed our business. I'm sorry, yes. Uh, Talk about your business. Uh, well, we, there's no public comment for the sake of the public. There's no public presence, so there's no public comment. And I'm declaring this meeting of GOL adjourned at 12.30. Well, on my watch, 12.30 exactly, but. Megan, thank you so much. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.